Hey guys, Lazy Modding here with yet another modding tutorial to add to your collection. So today we're going to go over the basics of color ID along with a few other uh, things that we can use in Substance Painter to make our mods a little bit better. So this is not going to be a terribly in-depth tutorial on Substance Painter. Um, it's just going to kind of show the basics of color ID and uh, putting multiple different materials on the same object without needing the use of many materials in Substance Painter. So yeah, let's get started. So we're going to basically just start with a basic cube to start off with. So um, open Blender most time. It doesn't matter what version you're on. So we're going to go to general and we're just going to get this cube. It starts out as a 2 meter by 2 meter by 2 meter. Um, for this tutorial, I don't really care what the units are. Um, we're just going to use uh, what we have right now. So we have this cube. Um, you know, it, it's a cube. So the first thing we're going to go do is um, go in UV, um, unwrap it. Um, if you watched the previous tutorial, you kind of know how to do this. If you didn't, well, you're about to see again. So um, so up here at the top, um, you'll originally start in this layout. If you go to UV editing, it will bring you to this two pane set out. So this is what your mesh looks like on a 2D layout. So a pane um, that has all your uh, meshes so there's six different one six different panels on this cube so there's six different um, faces on this UV so now we have that set up um, you can go to UV and we're gonna go to smart UV project uh, we're gonna keep the angle limit of 66 on here islands margin we're gonna go to 0 0.001 um, and then area weight, we're going to keep the same correct aspect. You're going to want to keep that engaged. And we're just not going to worry about scale the bounds. So we're going to hit OK. And as you can see, it kind of edited um, the layout of our faces over here on the UV um, viewer. So now we have that done. The next thing that we're going to do um, is actually I'm just going to make another UV map. Uh, for some reason, when it comes to FS, you can almost always do two UV maps and be okay. Um, because there's some shaders that require you to have two UV maps. And I have seen that um, when it comes to like painting um, with vertex paint and stuff, two UV maps seem to work a little bit better than just one. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna just hit, uh, you're gonna go to ob your object data properties. And um, depending on what tabs open, you're gonna wanna find your UV and uh, make sure it's open so you drop down so you'll have uv map here um, and then we're going to go here and hit this plus so then that's going to make a secondary uv map uh, that you can follow along with um, and so that basically just creates two of the same thing um, in certain sense we will make them different but today we're just going to have the same uv maps um, so now that we have that done the next thing we need to do is to add some vertex paint to this cube. Um, so to do that, we're gonna go to our texture paint um, workspace, and it kind of looks like a UV map. Um, if you look, you can kind of see the square here. And then when it first gets in here, you're gonna be in texture paint mode. Uh, and that's not what we want. We want vertex paint. So go up here to your drop down, and you can select vertex paint, um, and it will change it up a little bit um, it'll say vertex paint and then so we're gonna paint uh, faces and then our first color we're gonna do we'll start with blue uh, so we're actually gonna go here and we're gonna tab into our edit mode by hitting the tab button and it's gonna bring up our edit mode and we're gonna select this face uh, so now whenever you go out of it uh, now you can go to paint set um, vertex colors and it will automatically paint the face you had selected. So we're gonna have six different colors because we're gonna put um, six different materials on this. So now we need to go and we're gonna do 
we'll go with a light blue. I think that should work. Uh, so then we're going to go back into edit mode again, and we're going to select this face. Tab back out, paint, or you can do shift K, uh, and it will paint that face as well. So now we've got that face done, let's go to this face. Um, for this one, we'll go with a brighter green. Shift K again to paint. So now we're three out of the six faces done. So uh, I might, we'll see, I might fast forward through this. And now your cube is a multicolored deal. Um, so don't get this wrong with material colors. We are all still under this one material here, just one. And to prove that, you can see we just have one in here. And for this tutorial, we're just gonna call this material anyway. Um, it will work for what we are doing. So now that we have that done, um, we're gonna go and make sure that we edge or auto smooth this. Um, that way, so then in the game, when we can load this up, it will automatically be auto smooth and we don't have to worry about it. So now that we have this done, um, we're going to go and export a i3D out. Um, go modding. Files are not in order here. So, tutorial folder. I haven't created one yet. So, we're going to go with um, basic substance painter. Yeah, that works. Um, and we're just going to go to. We'll just save it in here. So we're going to go cube i3D. Uh, we're only going to want to export the cube, so export needs to be selected to selected object. Now remember, you need the i3D exporter to be able to do this. Um, that's where I went up here was to file export i3D. Uh, and we're going to keep everything how it is. So export i3D, boom, it exported. Next thing we need to do is export out uh, FBX file so we can actually substance paint this thing. So we're going to go back up to file, we're going to export, then we're going to go to uh, FBX, then we're just going to go right back to where we were. So tutorial folder basic, and we'll just name this cube.fbx. So FBX is kind of like an OBJ file. Um, I've had better luck with it rendering right as an FBX versus an OBJ. I don't think there's necessarily a big difference. Um, I just have had better luck. That's just me. So we're going to export that as an FBX. And uh, now when we go to our folders, this big screen, tutorial folder, basic substance painter, you can see that we have cube.fbx, cube.i3d, and the cube export log. So now we are ready for substance painter. So now we have exported out our uh, i3D in our cube. Now we're gonna go open Substance Painter. Um, if you don't have Substance Painter, I definitely recommend getting it if you're gonna be doing a lot of modding um, and custom dirt maps and stuff like that. It just makes life easier. Yes, it's expensive, but um, there's been a few cases to where you can get like a lifetime license of it. And if you are going to be doing a lot of heavy modding I do believe Substance Painter is worth it. So, um, so we're gonna go here and um, we're gonna open basically a new file. So you can go Control N. Should go Control N. Control N. There it is. Um, or you can go to File um, up here at the top. Go New. Either way, I'll load it in. Um, there'll be another video coming out how to load all these presets and stuff into Giants Editor. Um, right now there are other videos out for it. That's how come that's not such a uh, Priority for me to do but I will get around to it eventually so um, We're just gonna leave that Giants 8 engine um, We're gonna go here and select our cube.fbx from our tutorial folder So now that's loaded in we're gonna leave this document resolution at 2048 by 2048 and the rest of the settings can remain the same so we're gonna hit ok and it's going to import our cube into Substance Painter. Uh, so now we have all this done. The next thing we need to do is to go and bake our mesh. So um, to open the bake menu, you can go Control Shift B, 
or um, if you don't know the key bind, you can go to edit and bake mesh maps. Um, and we're gonna take this up to a 4K output size texture. So this is not the size of the textures that they will be exported out as. This is just the size of the textures that they're gonna be rendered at. So higher the size that you can render at, more quality that you could get out of it. Um, it will still be exported as a 2048 uh, by 2048 texture like we set uh, when we imported the cube. Uh, this just helps with like all your spec maps and normal maps and stuff like that. So we're gonna go to dilation width and we're gonna go down to one. Uh, and then under high definition meshes, we're gonna go and we're gonna upload our cube.fbx even though it's not that high of a definition. Everything on this page is good to go. Um, just make sure we do have everything checked that we need. So we have world space normal checked, ID checked, ambient occlusion checked, curvature checked, position checked, and thickness checked. We do need to go to our ID map though and change this from material color to vertex color. Um, so since we went in and vertex painted this mesh without having to make several different materials as that will help speed the process up in the long run, um, basically it's just going to pull the vertex colors instead of uh, a material color. Um, you can do it both ways. I just recommend doing it the vertex way as I've had better luck um, doing it that way. So now that all that's set, um, we can go to bake selected textures. It's going to go through and it's going to bake all these different IDs. Um, you've seen it flash there real quick of the material map. Um, so now that that's loaded, uh, we can go and make sure that our color ID map worked. And if you look over here, uh, it did. Um, because we have the green, the yellow, the orange, the red, the uh, light blue, and the dark blue um, on your ID map. So now when we go to, I don't know, let's put some carbon fiber on something. So we're going to go and pull carbon fiber. We're going to hit control, and we're going to drop it on our orange mesh. And now, as you can see, that texture is only on the orange and it doesn't affect any of the other uh, faces that are different quote unquote materials on this mesh. So, yeah, so um, we'll go with, we'll make um, this one here, we'll go with leather on yellow here. So now we have like two different kind of materials on here. Um, let's see what else there is. Um, we will go and make one of these concrete. So, once again, um, just remember to go and hit control to do this. Um, most time you'll hit control after you select it. Um, I was having issues there apparently doing that. Um, but we're going to drop it on this blue face on top. So now you can see, now we have our concrete on top. Um, so that leaves three faces for us to mess with. Um, so on this face, let's go with some wood, um, plain wood here. So grab the texture, control, drop it on our lighter blue, and now we have like a wood grain texture on it as well. Um, on this face, We'll go, we'll go with like a plastic grid. So we haven't done plastic yet. So we'll drop that there, boom, plastic grid. And on this bottom side, we'll go with some painted steel, cause why not? So we'll drop that on the red and boom, all six faces now have a different texture to them. Um, so now that we have that done, um, as you add these textures, it's automatically going to build um, spec, normal maps, and all that from it. So now that that's done, um, we're going to go to File and Export Textures. Um, and we're going to take this file and we're just going to run it to our um, modding or tutorial folder, basic substance painter, and we're just going to go new folder texture double click that so it loads it in as our folder select folder and now it's routed to our that output template um, when you import all the giant stuff you will have 
the Giants export and imports. So we're just going to go Giants Engine 8 Asset. Even though we put two UVs on this, we do not need to activate the second UV. We just need this, the basic asset one. Um, and most of the rest of this you can just leave as it is. Uh, just to make sure everything is loading right, you have Material Diffuse, Material Normal, Material Spec. They all will be uh, PNG files at 248 pixels by 248 pixels. And we'll go to Export. They are all exported out. We'll go back to our basic Substance Painter um, folder here, and we'll double click on cube.i3d. So that's gonna load up Giants Editor, um, and we're just gonna kinda of just zoom in here. And you know, we, we still got our basic cube here. Um, and as you can see, it already's got the material assigned once again, only one material on it. So now we're golden. So uh, basically what our diffuse map will be, will be this albedo map gloss map and normal map um, but there's just a few other things that we could possibly do um, Giants does have a texture tool that you can use and that's what we're going to actually use uh, to convert our textures over to a DDS textures instead of having to um, let Giants do it and then you have to go sometimes back in and have to add on um, certain properties to these textures. So I opened up the texture uh, window. We'll just make these full screen because why not? I opened up our texture files over here. Um, and as you can see, they're all loaded up. All of them kind of have different things going on. And then we uh, downloaded our texture tool that you can get from the Giants Developers Network. Um, and I just have it ex er, unzipped into my modding folder so I can just load it up real quick. And we're going to find texture tool.exe. Um, this is going to be the file, but you don't necessarily open it. So you go over here and we'll just drag and select all three of our uh, texture files, so our diffuse, normal, spec, map, etc. And we're just going to drag those over onto the top of our texture tool.exe. And we're going to load it, and we have this um, basically command window that pops up that says, Performing three texture conversions, thread count 15, conversion process, and it just tells you what it's changing all these textures to. So now we have DDS files. And when it's done, it will say operation completed with no error. Boom, you're done. We have all these files that ha should have the proper properties on them. So you don't have to go back into GIMP or, no or uh, paint.net and add those properties later when the Giants engine gets mad at you. So now that we have that loaded, we're going to go to our Abido map and we're going to hit those three red dots to import a new map. So now we open up this uh, this window. It's uh, labeled diffuse map. I don't know why we can't just call everything diffuse, but we just don't. So um, you'll go and hit these three dots again and it will open up a window, um, a file explorer. And we're just going to go down to our tutorial folder basic substance painter textures and we're going to load in our material underscore diffuse dot tds file we're going to import that in and as you can see it's all loaded up in here and we're going to hit ok so now you can see we have all those different textures that are now on this but they still look a little bland so what we're going to do next is we're going to import our spec map over the top of this so um, spec map is also uh, our gloss map uh, so when people refer to a spec map they're talking about this gloss map so we'll go hit in our three dots again now it says gloss map go to your three dots and we're going to load in material underscore specular map D dot dds we'll load that in boom it's there hit ok so that didn't really do too much there wasn't a whole lot of depth data on the spec map um, as that's more for like dirt, etc. Now where we will really start getting some um, looks at the textures are when we go and import our normal map. So we're going to go down a normal map, hit those three dots, hit those three dots on the normal map window, and we're going to import material underscore normal dot DDS, and we're going to hit OK. Uh, you might get this win this thing if. Uh, depending on how you export it out of Giants 
or out of Blender, whether using the community add-on or the Giants i3 editor add-on. Um, most time, the Giants one will automatically tick the tangent. Um, the other one won't, but that is a simple fix. So if you have this issue, your cube will disappear real quick. But if you go to Shape and then go find Tangents and click it, your, your, your cube will come back to life. So now we have a really cool looking cube with different materials on it for sure. I kind of brought a light here so you guys can kind of like see uh, just like the different textures on it and stuff like that. So, but yeah, so hopefully this video helps you guys out a little bit um, on kind of how to do that. There's your, which of course, yeah, remember that is like one inch of wood that's strained over two meters. So it's, it's a little rough, but it works. So, but yeah, so that is going to be a wrap on how to um, apply different uh, textures within Substance Painter to one material on an object. So that's about it on this video. So if you guys have any ideas on other videos you'd like, make sure to drop those in the comment section as I do look at that. And yeah, so we'll be streaming a lot here um, over the last few days. And we're going to keep trying to keep that up. So if you guys see a stream, make sure to hop in and say hello. It really does mean a lot when you guys say how much these tutorials helped. As that's really my goal. I hate having people's creativity locked up behind um, a paywall or something where they just cannot learn how to do stuff. I just think that's wrong. Um, it's, it's hard to learn how to do some proper stuff in FS. I will say that. So that's the whole goal here is we're going to try to change that motto. And yeah, so we're starting one tutorial at a time. So anyway, I hope this guy's helped you guys out quite a bit on how to um, create different materials onto one material. Is that, I don't, I guess that's what we'll roll with. But yeah, we'll see you guys again real soon. Adios.